Hello everybody. It looks like I dropped the ball when I tried to explain the portrait generation options last time and the time before that because all the responses I've gotten have been this is how you should do it if you plan to do it these ways, not which way do you prefer. So let me start over. There are two basic approaches, 2D and 3D. The 2D approach that I plan to use is this. It's a very simple slicing system where there's a top, middle, and bottom. Uh, and it's like those games that you used to play where you twist them into place. Now if you're wondering why are you doing a slicing system rather than component based systems, I'll explain. I've made roughly 50 portrait based algorithms, portrait creating algorithms. Um, I used them extensively in college and high school for characters in my tabletop games. So I've made a lot of these and I used to use element based generation systems where you know you switch out the eyes, you switch out the mouth, you switch out the hair. The problem is that those always look the same. It did, even if you change the features dramatically, it, they always look the same because all of the characters are always facing the exact same direction with the exact same focus. It's, uh, it, it never looks, it never varies. If you want an example of that, you can see RPG Maker's character creation system. Uh, they have a portrait management system where you can create portraits and all of the characters look the same. If you use a slicing system, then you can use different people whose heads are facing in different directions, uh, not like 90 degrees off, but you know, 30 degrees off. And that means that the various pieces get misaligned like this. So you can see that this mouth is not aligned with the face. And that, that skewing is awfully, uh, you know, it's, it's obvious and perhaps ugly, but it gives the character a strong sense of personality, as opposed to uh, if they all had the exact same uh, mouth features. Yeah, so even if, it's not a matter of big mouth, small mouth. It's a matter of the mouth having a lot of personality because it's not in the exact same alignment as the rest of the face. And you can see that pretty clearly with these two guys. That's why I'd go with slicing. Um, and on the technical side, this stuff is very easy. On the technical side, both of these things are very easy. It's just a matter of the amount of artistic work that you have to do to get there. The other option is, of course, the 3D option. And this is also very early on. But um, with the 3D option, what you do is you use bones to reshape the face. Now, the reason you use bones instead of blend keys is because blend keys are uh, going to move the verts away from the bones and that means that bone animations will end up getting screwed up uh, which is um, post mode there and when the bones get screwed up uh, when the bone animations get screwed up you get weird facial expressions so the better option in my case is to actually do the opposite the bone animations are um, are for the facial distortion and then you have blend key animations for the expressions and that way you can build yourself characters that look pretty distinct using bone deformation techniques um, you know just uh, as you see fit so for example if we wanted to have a fat uh, monkey we would expand some of these um, we could expand this like so uh, and then we could even tilt we could tilt this forward like this. Uh, hmm. Well, there's a lot of options. It's just a matter of which ones we prefer. How about we tilt this forward? Like, nah. That makes them look too human. Let's just scale this up. There we are. And then we can also rotate this 10 degrees. And rotate this negative 10 degrees. And maybe rotate this down 10 degrees. And this down 10 degrees. And scale these up. Uh, while rotating them down. Oop, that's too far. And so you can see that uh, you can put together a character that looks relatively unique without too much effort. Um, and then you use the uh, shape keys to actually give this person expressions, uh, with the exception probably of the jaw opening and closing. I'd have to rewire the um, the bones if I wanted to allow that animation, but you know, basically, the eyes move, the jaws open and close, and those are the only animations that are bone-related in the face. Uh, and that way, you can get a very, very large amount of distinctiveness without screwing up the animations. 
Um, it's not ideal because the ideal solution is to do this and then bake it and then wire it into the bones, but that would be a lot of effort. So the question is, which do you prefer, 2D or 3D? 3D is just better, um, but it takes about 20 times more effort. The reason that 3D is so much better is because you can vary the angle of the camera, and you can vary their facial expressions, and you can animate them, uh, but it does require a lot more work. So the question I'm asking is not, how do I do these things? The question I'm asking is, would you prefer to see me spend time on these 3D faces, or would you prefer that I spend less time on the 2D faces?